If you watched my last video about new color management operations in Blender 5.0, I talked about the new view transform that has become available to us from the ASUS 2.0 color management system. And I said that we have just the new view transform from ASUS 2.0. Well, it turns out that the developers have been very busy and they have now extended the ACES support, not just to the view transform, but we now have the ability to set the internal linear color space that Blender is using to calculate color. And this is really important. You see, we now have Linear Rec 2020 and we have the ACES CG color space with its AP1 primaries. So this is a really big deal. This means that you can now do a rendering in Blender 5.0, save it as an EXR file, and send it to a studio who's using the full ACES pipeline and say, hey, here's my ACES compliant render. So both Rec 2020 and ACES CG are quite a bit larger than the old linear Rec 709. And it's basically going to give you a lot more color, and especially the reds and the greens. And remember, this defines the RGB primary points for the color space. So let's go ahead and configure this to run ACES CG and watch what happens. It gives us this dialog box here that basically just says it's going to convert all of the internal color, all the workings of color, to match correctly to ACES CG. It's basically doing a color conversion as if you were in Photoshop converting an image from one color profile to another. Click Apply, and now the entire pipeline is using ACES CG with its AP1 primaries. We can come over here and we can change the view transform to ACES 2.0, and we could also set the display device to, in my case, display P3, which is what would make sense since I'm using a liquid retina display on a MacBook Pro. So this gives us the potential for much more vibrant color and a better interpretation of what the renderer is doing with color internally so we can see things in a more accurate way. We've got a much larger internal rendering pool of colors to work with. We can display them more correctly now because you can set a display device that is not larger than the internal color space like it was before. We could set display P3 before, but it would have always been larger than what the renderer was actually calculating colors with, which was the old Linear Rec 709, and that's no longer the case. In my first video on the ASUS 2.0 View Transform, I showed some examples comparing it to standard, filmic, and AGX. But those renderings were done using Linear Rec 709 as the internal color space. This time, I want to show you a few basic comparisons which use the same view transform, but instead change the color space. For these images, I used Display P3 as the display color space, and then also saved the PNG files tagged with P3. Saving renderings with color spaces other than sRGB is also something that's new to 5.0. Please note that this video is encoded with wide gamut color space. To view this video correctly, view it on a monitor with at least a P3 color space for best viewing experience. So in this first example, this is pretty simple and it's subtle. Both the left and the right use the ASUS 2.0 view transform, but the linear color space on the left is Rec 709, meaning that's the old blender, and then ASUS CG on the right. And when you look carefully, you can see the saturation of the background is just a little bit better. So it's technically more accurate using the ACES CG. And then I rendered the same scene, this time using AGX for both images, and again Rec 709 for the color space on the left, and ACES CG for the color space on the right. And again, it's more subtle, but you can see this backdrop here, the gradient, is technically more accurate with what the renderer is doing internally. This next one is more interesting to me, because even though they're still subtle, again, we're using AGX and we're using Rec 709 on the left and ASUS CG on the right, the ASUS CG is able to maintain better saturation in these bright greens, and that's very much a characteristic of a wider color gamut. And then here, I've switched over to using the ASUS 2.0 view transform for both, but again, the ASUS CG version is able to maintain much better saturation on these very bright greens. Now, I've saved the best for last. 
A lot of people have complained that while they like AGX, it has this tendency to desaturate brightly lit colors. And I'm here to show you that one of the ways that you can solve that now is by giving it a much higher gamut color working space, in this case, ACES CG. Just look at the difference here in these brightly lit reds of Rec. 709 is the color space versus ACES CG. So let me go ahead and just show you these overlaid and I'm going to flip back and forth between Rec. 709 and ACES CG, and that will really demonstrate how a higher gamut color space can really help AGX. Let's lay some groundwork for understanding this in case you didn't watch my previous video, or you just want a refresher on some of the technicalities of what's going on behind the scene here. The working space is the internal pool of colors that the renderer essentially has to work within. And if you'll notice here, it says linear and linear. ACES CG is also linear. It just isn't named that way. So these are sometimes going to be referred to as what's called scene referred color spaces. So let's talk about this in two components. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the color primaries that I mentioned. And then we're going to jump back and we're going to talk about what this linear means. So display devices have the ability to display RGB colors. They've got little filaments of RGB and the combination of those R, G, and B little tiny, tiny, tiny lights in combination with each other produces a specific color. But if you have only, let's say, the red light emitting elements enabled and the other two are off, then that is going to produce a particular red. And your display device is going to have ability to display a particular perfectly saturated red that our eyes can see. And the same is true with the blue and the same is true for the green. But our human visual system can still probably see a more pure type of red, green, and blue that the monitor can't necessarily produce. So there is this color chart that we can use that captures the entire range of visible colors that the human eye can see. And computers that use modern color management systems have device profiles that tell us exactly on this color chart of all visible colors where these red, green, and blue primaries that the monitor is capable of displaying are. And those specific colors are called the primaries of a color profile. As you go back in time, monitors were less and less capable of producing a broad range of colors, and those primary red, green, and blue colors that a monitor could produce may not have been very robust. And so the color space for those monitors would have been pretty small. The Linear Rec. 709 color space that Blender has used for a very long time is designed to try and produce a kind of backward compatibility with a large range of devices. And that Linear Rec. 709 can also be thought of as sRGB because they both share the same primaries. So that 1931 CIE color chart that we use as reference is how we understand the color spaces relative to each other. The Linear Rec. 709 is smaller than, say, the display P3 that my monitor is capable of, and that in turn is smaller than the Rec. 2020 or the Asus CG, which are much larger, and they are designed to be able to render a very large gamut of colors internally in the render space, which is what you want. You want the renderer to be able to render a very, very large range of colors. So up until now, Blender's been a little bit hamstrung by constraining itself to colors that could be produced on older hardware. It's great for backward compatibility and for compatibility with a large range of monitors and display devices, but we want to be forward-looking right now and able to generate content that can be displayed on newer and newer devices that have much broader ranges of color capabilities, both in terms of the, the hue or chromaticity, as we call it, but also in terms of the intensity of the colors. So this brings us to the concept of the word linear as they are specified here. Internally, when a renderer is working, and this applies to all ray tracers, they're following the physics of light. And it turns out the way that we see light, and also the way that monitors typically display light information, is not exactly the way that light exists in the real world. And these calculations are taking place 
based on the physics of light as they've been measured in laboratories and worked out in mathematical calculations that aren't biased by the human visual system. So this concept is based on this word linear, which means if I take a light source that has an intensity value of 1.0 and I give it a value of 2.0, there's a linear relationship in the amount of light that's produced where the 2.0 doubles the amount of light. But that's not the way the human visual system works. And because older CRT displays didn't have a linear relationship between the input voltage and the resulting light output, a doubling of the voltage didn't produce a doubling of light. The displays naturally produced a kind of nonlinear response, which was then accounted for by a gamma correction system. This is one of the key reasons why a gamma correction, typically a value of 2.2, is a fundamental part of our modern color management systems. The role of a view transform is to take high precision floating point color information that's calculated internally by the renderer and transform that into what we call a closed domain. So we go from the open domain of the internal color information, and that just means it can have color intensities that are very, very, very bright that go above a white value of 1.0. And then we crush them down into the closed domain space, reserving the upper brighter levels of the closed domain values to represent the brighter HDR values. So there are a couple of things that happen when Blender uses the term view transform. We're using the scene referred rendering color information that has been calculated in this particular case inside of the ACES CG color space. And we need to convert that into the display device's color space, but we also need to apply gamma correction to it. And then we need to take that high dynamic range data and fit it into the closed domain space from zero to one or zero to 255 if you want to think about it in 8-bit integer color space. So there's a sort of process going on of a couple of different things that need to happen in order for us to get what we expect to see in our final render. One of the advantages that Blender 5.0 is giving us is it's also giving us the ability to go beyond this typical closed domain space of 0 to 1, for instance, or 0 to 255. We now have the ability to come over and specify HDR information. And in this particular case, you can see I've got AGX with a NITS value of 1000, or we've got a NITS value of 2000 or 4000 for ASUS 2.0. And that just means the view transform can now take the color information and fit it into a larger closed domain that has a much higher ceiling if you want to think about it that way. So when we bring all of this together, Blender 5.0 is making some really significant improvements in the color management. It's giving us the ability to have a much larger internal pool of colors that it can use for rendering the color spaces from the old linear Rec. 709 to the Rec. 2020 and ASUS CG all the way up to the ability to use view transforms that can take into account the HDR abilities of modern monitors so we can display HDR data in a little bit more precise way. So if you haven't watched my previous video, let's talk a little bit about what ASUS is quickly so you have a general understanding why this is important. ASUS was designed as a way of producing consistent color amongst visual effects studios and producers of hardware and 3D renderers so that everyone could be on the same page from a color standpoint. Everything could be made consistent. So a photographer is out shooting video for a movie and they're using a particular camera and then somebody else is using another camera those cameras would have their color characteristics established by the manufacturer of those devices. And then you would have people using various renderers that would be producing VFX for the movie, and everyone would have different sort of color characteristics. So ASUS was designed to have a single large pool of color that would be the reference pool that everything would be dropped into and could be made relative to. 
those color characteristics that are known could be plotted relative to the large internal color space that ASIS uses called ASIS CG that uses what we call AP1 primaries. Because everything is being made relative to this large pool of internal color, all the color editing could be done in a consistent way regardless of the studio and regardless of the input device. In order for all of these devices and render files to be used with inside of ASUS, they have to be input into the system using what's called an IDT, an Input Device Transform, that has the color characteristics that tells ASUS how to convert those color characteristics into the equivalent spaces within the ASUS CG AP1 defined color space. Then, all the color editing can be done in this consistent color space but it then needs to be sent to a monitor where the operator or the artist can look at the color and edit the color. And those devices that the person is viewing it through, the monitor, the computer, has their own color characteristics. And those color characteristics are known and have what are called an ODT, an Output Device Transform. So there are three basic things encompassed in the ODT phase, and this is where the new ASUS 2.0 View Transform comes into play. The first thing that happens at the ODT phase is gamma correction. The linear color information needs to have gamma correction applied to look correct on the display device. Then, the ASUS CG color space is converted to the output device color space. The ODT tells the color management system what the color profile is for the output device. That could be the monitor device, or a JPEG, or a PNG image. This conversion attempts to maintain as much of the original color of the internal working space and make it consistent. And the third general thing in the ODT phase is tone mapping. In Blender, the view transform is where the tone mapping takes place. Tone mapping takes the high dynamic range scene referred data and fits it to the closed domain of the output device in a visually pleasing way. This could be the space of an 8-bit JPEG file or your monitor. This is where, in Blender, we have AGX, Filmic, or the ASUS 2.0 View Transform. It's important to note that this color management pipeline I've just outlined for ASUS also exists within Blender. Blender 5.0 has just expanded its color management to include the proper ASUS CG color space and its specific view transform. In addition, 5.0 introduces another high gamut color space called Rec 2020. So Blender 5.0 improves color management in significant ways.